Right, so now comes the time for us to uh, start filling the loop up and I can pretty much get away with doing it with the rig on its side so you'll be able to see as well. Now uh, the Special Tech kit doesn't come with any coolant because it's quite a uh, personal thing, you can pick your colours. Now basically what I've got is a litre of pre-mix, you, you'll get away with a litre with this but anything bigger than you'll need to. And uh, the pre-mix and the dyes, because I've got a mate that makes his own water cooling dyes and he didn't, I didn't know what colour I was going to have so he's literally sent me every one that he does he does loads and loads of colours but if you look out for this guy on your water cooling shops Mayhem's Dye it's called he's actually a personal friend of mine and I've got the uh, Premix as well. So yeah, keep an eye out for that. It's uh, on for sa on sale at Special Tech. There's several start sites in the U uh, in this UK that have got it. Um, also, it's starting to go to the states as well. But if um, you can't find this, then literally go to your local retailer and say, "Tiny Tom Logan on YouTube says you've got to get me some Mayhem's Dye in." Um, and if they need any details, get them to contact me, or just Google really, but if they want any details, get them to contact me and I'll pass them on to Mick. But essentially, the reason why I've got the clear is because then you can add your own dye, make it your own strength, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some colour in this, some dye in this now, and uh, so basically I can see it going through the loops, and it'll also help me when I'm leak testing, because you'll be able to see the colours, but then later on, if I want it any stronger, all I've got to do is add a little bit more dye into the loop. But I'm going to take you down to the reservoir now, and then we'll start thinking about actually pumping some water through. But I'm going to put some dye in this first, and then, uh, yeah, be back in a sec. Right then, guys, uh, this is the filling stage. Now, basically, I've got the pump out on the box to make this a bit easier. Uh, and so I'm going to try and pour the fluid in from behind as well, just so you can see. Now the Mayhem's dye, I mean, if you have a look at that, that's four drops of the dye. Drops into that bottle. It's absolutely flipping bonkers. Kudos to him as well. Now, I'm going to get in the way, because I'm trying to do this on video. Now, Thankfully, Mayhem's die has got a uh, a spout on the bottom that comes with it. Now, spillage is good. It's not a bad thing. That's why we've taken it out of the system. Kitchen roll is an absolute must when you're doing something like this. Have some out. Have some spare ready because you probably are going to make mistakes and it's better to have it ready. And as you can see I've spilt a little bit but it's outside the rig so it's no big deal. You can give it a mop up. Easily done. And this is another thing. This is why I've done the dye. As you can see the dye on the tissue paper. Now even though we have... Um, even though we've uh, got everything off, it's always best to put some tissue paper in your system. Now that's not to uh, where we've got the power off. It doesn't really matter about it um, hitting any of the components so much because at the end of the day, uh, everything's powered off, so nothing's going to die. The reason why you put the paper in is because if you get a little drip, it will hit the white paper and then you'll see the colour. So you can um, you'll be able to see it a lot quicker. Um, and then at, again it's going to stop it hitting your PC parts so you might not have to let them dry for a couple of days but you put the paper in uh, it's just uh, to, as an optical guide now what I've done as well as kicking all my parts over by the side of me is I've filled the reservoir up now basically what I'm going to do is uh, I'll turn the uh, system on just quickly just to show you what's going to happen you're going to see it start pumping up this hose now, straight away, you can see it starting to pump up into the hose. 
But what we need to do is, as it's pumping, where this is an empty system, we need to keep adding the fluid. So pretty much what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fill it with the camera running, just to show you what you need to do. Now you're going to hear a lot of gurgling noises and stuff like that because I'm trying to turn stuff on and you know keep you all so that you can see roughly what's going on. Try and get me head out of the way. Now the reason why you can hear it different is because of the uh, the water levels going down below where the pump is. Now, not doing too badly at the moment. Keep an eye open for leaks. Not seeing any gushers at the moment, which is always a good sign. Big air bubble, keep an eye open for those. Now what I'm doing by switching the um, rig on and off is agitating the bubbles because we do actually need to get as many, um, as much of the air out of it as possible. Really we don't want any in there at all. And stick a bit more fluid in. Well, I'm just throwing a load of water all over myself. As I said before, leaks aren't a bad thing. Well, not when you're first filling it up anyway. Right, so basically now we've got the um, loop is full as far as we possibly can do. But what we have to do now is have a good look round, make sure we've not got any leaks. And then we also need to uh, bleed the air out of the system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it off. Turn the system off. You can see that big air bubble. Well, we want to get that air bubble out. I'm going to put the top back on the reservoir. Now what you would do if you had a uh, system so it was uh, all in and it was all bolted in and everything like that, you actually tilt the case to get the air bubbles out. But where we've got our pump out like this, we can actually give the pump a bit of a shake, help get the air bubbles out. We can tilt the system as well, help try and get air bubbles out and that's, you can see all the bubbles coming through there, that's just because we've moved the case and that's all of those bubbles we want to get out because that will reduce the cooling performance of the system. Put our tissue back in there. Right then guys, zoom you in on the pump quickly, you can see that we've got most of the air out of the pump, there's still some residual bubbles in the um, hose itself, but basically what you need to do now is let the uh, system run for about an hour, keep an eye out for leaks, keep giving the system a move, because you will get more air out as you've just seen there. And uh, the rule of thumb is to leak check for 24 hours. But what I do, I'll zoom you back out again. What I would do 
is keep an eye on it for at least two hours. Like, keep an eye on it like your life depends on it. And then uh, I would uh, then keep a watchful eye for about the next day. If it doesn't leak after that, unless you start moving it around or throwing it around the room, it's probably not going to. Uh, and when it comes to uh, bleeding the air out of the system, as I said, moving the case around is great. Try and get the air out. Just make sure that you uh, your pump can always get fed with uh, fluid because if the pump can uh, breathe air in, all then that's going to do is put air into the loop, which means that you need to start all over again. So that's not a great idea. Uh, sometimes it can take a week or so to get all of the air out of your system, but it's a good idea to turn your system off. You see a bubble there, look. And back on again because it will agitate the rest of the bubbles in the system and give everything a chance to move and dislodge. But essentially now, that's our water cooling loop built. Uh, we will say it's leak tested and ready to go. Pretty much now we're ready to do some testing. Right then guys, that's it. All in, fitted, all bled, uh, all ready to use and running. Uh, pan across here. If I zoom you down, it is quite cold in the room at the moment. The bottom temperature is the inside temperature. The out temperature, the thermometer, is actually in my loft. Because I've got some uh, rigs up there. But anyway, don't need to just look at the 16.6. .6, that's the temperature in the room, so it's quite cool. Now if we move up here, you can see that that's prime running. The uh, system is at uh, 200 times 20 for a 4 gigahertz overclock um, with 2000 megahertz RAM at 1.25 volts and they are the temperatures. As you can see the hottest core is 70, the coolest core is 62. I have tried messing about with a block to balance the temperatures out uh, but my uh, the 950 that I've got, the temperatures across the cores do fluctuate with no matter what I've got in there. So, you can see the temperatures at 4 GHz, with, and that's on full load, and it's been running now for 45 minutes. We'll pan back across so you can see the system. So, that's the end of your water cooling guide. Start to finish, choosing the parts, installation, bleeding. I am going to be doing a review on the uh, kit, so a full review. Um, and then comparing it to heat sinks and stuff uh, within the next couple of weeks. If you have any questions, uh, please don't be afraid to uh, join up on the Overclock 3D forums and ask me the questions there. Big thanks to XSPC, Special Tech, and of course, uh, Mayhem's Die.